So, um, I'm going to talk about the front-end checklist, as you may know. Um, so, the front-end checklist, uh, well, maybe I will present myself a little bit more. Um, so, as I, I said earlier, I'm just a front-end developer. I love code. I worked on international brands and a few projects. And I can share with you after if you want. Uh, I love people. I manage several teams in France in uh, in Mauritius, and I I love building cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I work on big platforms. You know Pampers. 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 Uh, yeah, I know that <laughs> sounds strange, but yeah, it's a big big platform from Procter Gamble. It's you know Procter Gamble, so Pampers is the number one brand from Procter, Procter Gamble in the world. It's huge. It's really huge. So I work on one of of their projects and some applications uh, and open source project that I will share with you after that. So yeah, I work, I lived in Brazil a few years. I'm from France, but my parents are from Portugal, and which is here, here. So, uh, yeah, it's lost in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, it's smaller than that, okay? But <laughs> I put that square because it will be so too small. And hopefully, I will be moving to Canada soon. Normally. Uh, so. I will say your, your probable current situation, but we'll see, depending what you are doing in general. But front-end developers are often building websites like that. Because short timelines, sometimes if you work for clients, um, yeah, <laughs> if you work for, for some clients, sometimes the timelines are short, so you need to, to be really fast in what you are doing. Uh, sometimes you have a feature that is sent by the client uh, in the middle of the project. You forgot the date of the delivery. It's the last season of Game of Thrones. Or a new training you should manage. That happened a lot of times. And yeah, I heard that kind of excuses a lot of, of time. So when you, we are working very fast, most of the time we found before or after going to production, some bugs or some piece of code that are missing, it has out on images, this kind of stuff. A lot of things can be missing in general uh, when you, you are working project after project after project. So you, you, you may guess what I'm going to, to say, but it should exist another way to live as a front-end developer, and it's using a checklist. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so maybe you, you already heard about that book, The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Kawande. Um, so the book was uh, about surgeons that after using a checklist, we're able to save a lot, of, a lot of more lives than before using some checklist. So that's a reference about checklists in general, not specifically. So why you should use some, or some sort of checklist in your daily workflow? But there are some few examples. We can find much more. So you can use a checklist to avoid repetitive error or omissions in your code to ensure the quality of your de deliverables. Save your time to go out with your loved ones. For example, assure a document that you can share with teams, colleagues, or some people, uh, and, and useful document for new colleagues in general if you are working in a company or web agency. So, what do you think? That makes sense for you? If I go back. Does, um, what are the types of image optimization to keep this there? I know that there's like you can. 
the checklist you had, like uh, meta tags, things that you want, people often forget. Exactly. I don't remember anything to like image optimization. So today, what, what changed these last years is related to the devices we are using to connect to internet. So today you are using mobile phones, tablets, this kind of stuff. And that changed a lot of things. Because before we, we were developing websites for people uh, sitting in their desk on a desktop. So the connection was good, you didn't need to... The connection was the same during all the time you are on internet. But for example, today you are on your mobile, mobile phone, you are walking in the street, sometimes you have good connection, sometimes not. So performance is something huge and really, really important today when you develop a website. In general, I can show you on... Uh, um, Oh, global, uh, it's a global internet. So today, uh, not that one, that one. So today, around 65% of the website in general, people that are connecting on website came from mobile phones. Today, you have much more people coming from mobile. Um, device no mobile tablet desktop yeah that's the one I think uh, wait the green yeah the mobile is on the green desktop the blue and the tablet here so you have much more people that are coming from mobile so if you develop a website today you need to focus first on the mobile and after on the desktop. But two years ago, it was desktop and mobile. So for example, you have a poor connection on a mobile. If you have a huge image, the person will not be able to download all the image and see your content. So image optimization is something essential today if you are developing a website. That's one of the things. Not only one, we will see more, but that's one thing that is really important. And is there a way to change the quality of the image depending on the connection? Depending on the device. On the device, okay. Yeah, not the connection may be with the API, but it's not supported on all the browsers. Uh, but on the screen, you can change. You have the picture source set. Oops. You can provide different images based on the device, on the real solution of the device. So that's, that's it's something interesting. So you have a few examples here. Uh, and all, all the articles about. So for... So you resize and you provide a different, let me see an image. So that's an example. So depending the width of your device, you can provide a different image. That's another way to do that. So that's the situation that most of the people can, can, can have today. So the front-end checklist. I define the front-end checklist like an exhaustive list of all elements you need to have, such as before launching your site or HTML page to production. Um, so this project, I started to work on that front-end checklist three years ago, but I never found time to, to end that project. And before I, I left the, the, one, the company in Mauritius, I thought to, to end that checklist and offer that like a gift to my team. So um, I built a checklist based on repetitive errors that I, I was founding um, on my team. Uh, and I tried to put everything in one document. So I tried to find all that checklist before, but I never found something updated and with everything that is needed. So. That's 
Yeah, that, that is uh, the table of the, all the sections I have on the front end checklist. So the head, HTML, web fonts, CSS, images, JavaScript performance, accessibility, and SEO. So you may think that, for example, SEO or performance are not front end subjects, but they are. Even in general, you can have a SEO, SEO person responsible for the SEO. It's really important that a front-end developer uh, understand some, some important pon points about the SEO because SEO is related to the code. So, SEO? Sorry? What is it? Search engine optimization. Oh, okay. It's like the meta tags? But not only. Okay. So the headings, uh, a lot of things, I will go through that after, but a lot of things are uh, important on the front end side. Um, do you have anything you you don't understand for some web fonts or accessibility or what would performance be on the front end? Yeah. So yeah in general people think that performance is only a back end thing, but you have a lot of things that can or need to be handled in the front end side too. For example we were talking about op image optimization. You can handle that in the backend side, but you can handle that on the frontend side too. In general, um, content, for example, images into articles, for example, uh, can be handled in the backend, but images you want to use in the layout, in the design, may be optimized by the frontend team, not the backend. But we will see some, some examples, maybe, to help you to understand. And accessibility? Accessibility. So when we develop a website, you, you may think about your, uh, so people that are, can access your website through a mobile phone or a desktop and have all the capability to connect to your website. But you have some people that don't see the colors like you and me, that use a browser with, um, with voice. For example, they, they speak and they can navigate on a website, this kind of stuff. So not everyone has all capability or abilities to navigate to, on a website like, like you and me with a mouse, with a keyboard, this kind of stuff. So, you need to follow some essential rules to be able to have your website accessible by everyone. Does that include languages depending on it's, IP address? It's, like no, no, it's more how you are going to organize your code and all the information you will provide to be able to be read by a voice browser, for example. Oh, for example, the, the, you know the alt, alternative text we put on an image. So most, a lot of people, a lot of websites, they, for example, they take the title of an article and they put that article on the alternative text. But it's really wrong. The alternative text, it's something that needs to describe the image in case you don't see that image. Not only in the case the, the, the image is not found. Because someone that can see will hear from the voice browser the description of the image and will understand or will visualize what the image is about. Mm -hmm. So this kind of stuff. So yeah, let me show you. So first, So first, I, I build a project on GitHub on a README file. Do you, you both have a GitHub account? Yes, OK. Uh, so you know about Markdown? What is Markdown? Not sure. So Markdown is a simple language. Language. I don't know if we can say a language, but that allow you to let me show you the row. So that it's markdown. Mm -hmm. So it's text without any display, particular display. So it's really useful 
uh, to write all documentation and you can personalize, generate a CSS and have something organized. So in general, if you, you already worked with Git, both, okay. So Morgan, all the Git repository on GitLab, on GitHub, on Bitbucket, uh, the readme.md is the, the first file that is read by the repository. So I wrote that, that file and that's something I, I, I say in an article I wrote. Um, the first day I put that on GitHub, I received more than 700 people the first day. I, I didn't, I was at, at home um, and I, I published that readme file in, in the morning. I asked my, my colleagues to put a star. I was happy with 10 or 12 stars, I don't remember how much. But at the end of the day, when I, I went to, to the GitHub account and I, I saw 700 people, I didn't know what happened during the day and why so many people uh, were coming uh, on, on the repository. So it's one of the reasons is based on the Reddit uh, publication. I was not aware about that. Really. And a lot of people came from Reddit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. incredible. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and after some time, I worked on maybe something you, you already saw, the application, even it's not really an application, but uh, I used all everything that is on the readme file and I build that tool. Uh, some people asked me to, to build that kind of thing. So I will show you after how it's working and how you can use it. But it's the same thing, but more dynamic. So, that is some technologies I used uh, for the, um, the application. So you have, uh, let me put yeah, stand up. Uh, you have the Margon, I use Ulysses on Mac. It's a nice application to to work on, on Margon files. Do you know what it is? Okay. Sorry? Pug. Exactly, Pug. Or XJT. It's a templating engine for HTML. It's really, really powerful. Really interesting. Uh, Gulf? We have used it, but I really know what okay, it is. Okay, it's a task manager. So Gulf can help you to automate a lot of tasks. So for example, image optimizations, um, minification of files, this kind of stuff, so you can use curl. Um, ES6, so JavaScript, SAS, you know SAS too. So it's not big technologies, but enough to, to, to build what you, you saw. And I use these tools too. Do you know what they are? So, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but just to, to give you an example. So, Travis CI, CI is for continuous integration. So, what is happening when I'm working on the front end chicken and I made some modification? So, I work on my repository, I commit and I push my code, and Travis is going to to launch, for example, the GELT build that I already defined before. The GELT build is some task that will test my code and see if it's missing something or something is wrong in my code. So it automatically watch my repository, launch the GELT build, and if the GELT build is without any error, Netlify, uh, no, sorry. If I don't have any error, it publish the result of uh, the Gulp build into another branch. So I'm working on a master branch, and if I don't have any error, the dist folder is going to be on the GH pages branch. And that branch uh, is used by Netlify to have my HTTPS and everything like that. Let me show you maybe an example. 
So it's some sort of example uh, that you can use easily. So Netlify is completely free. Travis is free too if you use for open source project. And yeah, that's it. Write front end code, push it, we handle the rest. So to show you uh, how it's working for the front end checklist, I linked so my GitHub repository or my branches to Netlify. And every time I, I have a new update, automatically uh, domain site settings, I think. So yeah, you have the repositories, name, uh, build and deploy, I think. Yeah, production branch, etc., etc., etc. I have defined, I don't remember exactly where, I have defined my, my domain name and this kind of stuff. So I can add, I can have HTTPS and all the things and all my code is hosted on GitHub. Sorry? I don't understand what Netlify does. Netlify, you, you can put your, um, your domain name for the checklist.io mm -hmm. and it's like a serverless application. So you put your code link to your domain name for free. It does that. But you update uh, the, let me show you maybe. Do, 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 do. Deploy. Here, for example, that's the sub name that Netlify can give me for free. Mm -hmm. And I put my, do my primary domain, and that primary domain is using what fits on that. And what fits on that is what's on my GH pages. Let me show you. Maybe I'm the type of so I have the master, but I have that branch. And on that branch, I have an index.html. Netlify helped me to have my domain name for the interface.io that will point to that file. So what you see on frontendjacklist.io is that branch. And code limit and code SE, uh, we'll talk maybe after about that, but there are some tools that can analyze your code and say if you have some errors in your code. So, for example, on, yeah, they are both, they are doing the same. I'm using code limit, but I will probably use code SE in, in a few weeks. But they use the same, they analyze your code and say if something is wrong how you can correct what you need to correct. Let me give you just an example. Oh, sorry, you took the photo? Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, good thing it. These kind of tools are really helpful today when you want to produce uh, a website. So they are free. All these tools are free if you have an open source project. If it's a private project, you need to pay. So, what? Okay. Oh, no, that's not the one. Open source, sorry. So, for example, based on, on something I will show you after, he found me 61 issues. They are not really issues, but based on the best practice, for example, here, the rule that is on code teammate is you can't have uh, functions that exceeds 25 uh, lines. 
So he's saying me, okay, you need to reduce and try to have less lines. And in that case, I can click here and create automatically a ticket on GitHub. So if I work with few people, I can create a ticket and someone else can correct me. I have an indication about how much time I need to fix that issue, probably, and where I can find that issue. So normally I don't have any critical issues, but there are some issues I need to correct. Uh, here it's interesting, so similar block of code found in two locations, consider refactoring. So these tools can work with JavaScript, can work with CSS and a lot of other languages too. But there are tools that, that are used in general by companies to really have less errors and have a better code in general. That, that, that's nice to know. If you want to, to know more about that, I recommend you to go to uh, GitHub Market Place and you will find all the tools that, it, not all, but most of the tools you can use today uh, to code quality, code review, continuous integration, this kind of stuff. So you have Codacy here. All these tools are doing more or less the same. You see here PHP, Python. So there are tools, you, you, today you can't live without these tools if you want to improve your code and what you are producing. So everything that is around continuous integration is really, really important because you don't want to test everything when you are uh, creating a new feature. You don't want to test everything to ensure that you don't have, have any issue. So these kind of tools can handle a lot of tests and if they found some errors, they are not going to deploy your code in production. So the, there are like firewalls of sub safe word uh, for your application or your website. And if you have more questions about that after, no problem to discuss about. So how you can use a front-end checklist? So first you need to decide which rule, rules your project and your team need to follow. So as you can see here, you may find they have a lot of, of rules. Every rules are required, some can be, if even I don't recommend, can be not followed. Full, full, full out. Yeah. Um, sorry, my English sometimes. Um, so first you need to decide which rule are crucial and essential for your team and your project and decide which one you really need to follow in all cases. Uh, define the rules to check at the beginning, during, and at the end of the project. So that's something that is missing today, but I will put these things uh, later on the project, because some rules, you can test these rules and decide about these rules at the beginning of the project, and you will not need to uh, test it again after. So. Define the rules you need to check at the beginning of the project, during and after, can be interesting too. Um, yeah. Sorry. Learn a little more about each rule. So it's something that I will add uh, soon. Um, but for example, understand why this rule is important is really essential. Uh, so, on most of the rules, you have some links to articles or documentation to help you to understand. But soon, I will add a new description, a why on all rules to explain why. Why that rule is important and why you need to follow that rule. Start to check. So, as you can see on the... if you have any question or something is not clear, don't hesitate to, to tell me. So as you can see on that uh, tool, you can start to check what is done, what is already 
good in your project and if you reload the page you will not lose everything so it's saved on local storage so do you know what is local storage okay so it's saved on local storage so don't worry if you or if you leave that page and you, you go after some days um, and and the goal is for you to define a project uh, uh, index.html david and the same if I reload it's saved and after you checked most of the rules you can generate a report and send to your client, use the QA team, or this kind of stuff. So that is exactly the same, but with CSS print. How many pages does it print out for pages? But if you want less, you can... Uh, wait, yeah. Uh, sorry, this one you can reduce every section. So for example, if I want to send only a recap, I can close everything. And when I click on generate report, I have the percentage of the rules that are checked. In one page, if I close this one, it's gonna be in one page only. Uh, so here there are some, some, uh, forgot the name, some anchors, um, and here it's a filtering tag system. Uh, when I click on one of these names, it is going to show me which one has this tag. Yeah, sure. Do uh, the what's the name? I forgot the word. These colors. Uh, you have the name on Which the top. One? This? No, no, the green. Yeah. yeah. You have the name on the top. Yeah, it's some priority. Priority. Yeah, I yeah, forgot priority. the word. Uh, it it comes built or you set it? Like, no, I set it. Okay. Not depending the project. Um, so. Even all these rules are required in general. You know, you need to, in case you don't have all the time and you want to focus on the one that's the most important. So that's why I try. Uh, even some people can be not uh, can agree with that, maybe, but uh, it's a good start, I think. Integrate automated testing in your workflow. So today it's required. You can't build anything without a task manager or a build system or something that will help you to automate a lot of tasks. So Grunt's the old one. Uh, Gulp, uh, it's more, more used today than Grunt. Grunt was one of the first. Webpack it's different than Gulp and Grant, but all these tools are here to help you to automate. Not this two one that is, you know, for the requirement. Yeah. Um, so it helps you to to. <laughs> uh, it helps you to. <laughs> it helps you to um, um, to concatenate your JavaScript. Uh, I will explain you there after maybe, but it helps you to concatenate all the JavaScript files that you can download with npm to be used in the client site. So, but today we are using more Webpack than browser uh, For this kind of test, yeah. you're talking about, it's the same that, uh, let's say, Mocha does? Mocha Chai? No, Mocha is for JavaScript tests. Um, that's running, um, but you can use Gulp to launch automatically Mocha if you do some modification in your code. But Mocha is completely different than that. But Mocha is really to write tests 
and see if your functions or your methods are working well. So what do these two different? So maybe these two are task runners. Let me show you some examples. If I take the front-end checklist, so I used Gulp on the front-end checklist. Um, da -da 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 -da. So here you have the Gulp file. So don't worry to understand everything, not the goal, but just to give you maybe a small little example that you can easily understand. Um, an easy one. Okay, this one. So that is a task that I call the compress images. So what is doing, here I have the group source, so all the files with JPEG, PNG, SVG extensions, okay? So I want to select all these files, and on all these files I want to apply image min. Image min it's an NPM module, that is going to optimize the JPEG and the PNG files. Don't worry to understand why or how it's working, but just to understand what it's doing. And after you optimize all these images, it's going to put all the optimized, optima optima optimized images on that destination repository. That's it. Where is it? So you have a folder with all the different image options and then okay, yeah. and then So you see here it's here it's a variable. So it's yours SRC on the top and here it's yours destination. So it's not the same folder. That's the source folder, that it's the destination folder. So I applied these um, optimizations on these files and I, all these files are after they are they have been optimized they are going to be created on that folder. And so you run a task in terminal for both and it runs all these tasks? Yeah. So I can launch that task manually. I can say gold compress images but it's not the best option. What I can do, it's... Mocha is here. Uh, I can say, okay, Gulp, please, I want you, or I want you to watch, I want you to watch all these repositories, and one of them is the images, and in case you've, you see any modification, anything, I want you to launch that task. Mm -hmm. So I run uh, Gulp, and when Gulp is running, it's going to watch all these folders and do something, some action, some running some task if uh, something happens. So, for example, in the case of SCSS, so if something changes, on that is for subfolder and that is for any file. So any file that can be in a subfolder with the SCSS extension, I want you to run linked CSS and compile. Is, is those the stars on um, the double one and the single one? For it's for any anything. That's for everything. That's not just called blank world. No. Now in general, that that is the one star to grab import all files from a folder. Yeah, in general, that is used a lot, that symbol, it's in general for everything. And the double one, yeah, yeah. use that one, I don't know the double one. For example, if I say, uh, if I put, I don't know, dash uh, test, it will take all the files with at the end test and, and wire at the, the beginning of the file. 
So that is an essential part for a gold file watch thing. And for to give you an example for compile, you will understand the yeah. Any question? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I have a question. I think I got confused. Uh, language. Okay. Gold is for automatic tasks. Yeah. I heard tests. I was like, ah, sorry. I'm so no, confused. No, no. Okay, sorry, sorry. got it. No, 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 sorry. Tasks. Oh, yeah, not okay. tests. Okay. I'm sorry. So do you, you yeah. use this instead of one pack, right? Yeah, uh, but you can do more or less the same with webpack. But it's going to be a little more complex. Uh, and it's not going to handle the same, the same way. Uh, I found that way easier to understand at first and maybe with time you can use in, 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 that, for, uh, in that file I use webpack but it's kind of little way I'm using it but I am using webpack here uh, but like not link here In general, why I like is seeing, okay, on some project I can use only Webpack and it can handle most of the thing, but if I want to have some specific thing, I can use both. But it's an interesting way to work too. But just to give you another example, even it's not the purpose of today, compile styles. So here it's a variable that points to my SCSS files. Cover it to avoid the girl to 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 stop if you found any error. And here I have but girl if do you know what is source maps? Okay, so when you SAS for example, in your own SAS there are several files when you where you put your CSS and at the end everything is compiled and you have only just one file okay the it's not easy to know when you have only for the volume main.css you want to change let me straight uh blah, 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 blah. So, for example, here I have main.css. But I would like to know, or I would like to know if it exists a way to know where the body is in which CSS file the body is. Mm -hmm. So, .css files yeah, maybe it's on, on some other file that is called, I don't know, uh, base.scss, this kind of stuff. So, source map is a file that is generated and gives you the name of the, or, the, the origin of that CSS declaration. So it's like, uh, let if I can show you here, blah, 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 blah. Just that's here, main.main.css.map, that is a source map file. Is resist, registering all the files and can give you specifically the where that declaration is coming from. Well, don't try to understand that so part. So what was that source up in the gold file? Is generated by the uh, gold file. But That's what it does at that source. Exactly. Creates this main that, main that, that uh, yeah, file. and if I open Whoops, where, where are you? This is something that in DevTools it helps you, you can actually see. Let me show you. Normally it's faster than that. So I'm on dev mode, and if I try to see anything here, for nope, okay, here. You can see yeah. links.scss line 32. So that is possible because uh, I generated a source map file. Wow. That can be 
what, how did you do <laughs> No, you don't need to do anything, okay? You just need to generate automatically a source map file. Source map file? Yeah. And that source Does it work map. For React? Does it work? Sorry? Does it work for React as well? That works, that works for SCSS and JavaScript too. Can you, can you do it in Webpack also? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you have an option where you can say, I uh, don't know exactly which. But you can say source map, and it will so generate a source map for your JavaScript code. So you will know exactly, not in that case, but you will know exactly uh, how the, 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 the final bundle file, how it is built. Yeah, that, no, so that, that's a lot of time. So you, if I'm, you need to enable this on the settings. Uh, if I'm not wrong, enable CSS source map, and here, enable JavaScript source map. And just something about that. Um, in case. Uh, uh, yeah. In case you have something uh, that is unified, oh my gosh. Look. Where it is. Okay. Are you aware about that pretty print? In case you have a JavaScript file or a CSS file that is unified. If you click on pretty print, it will put, yeah, well, that's interesting to know. So yeah, source map. So on, in that case, where I am? Yeah, so in that case, if I, in the development mode, I generate a source map here, Sad not saying that, uh, 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 okay. that is to convert all the SCSS files into CSS. Do you know what Autoprefixer? So, you know what? Um, when you need to put WebKit and MAS and this kind of stuff. No. Let me show you. And um, vendor prefix, that's the name in English. So, some this. So on CSS, some some. Depending which rule, sometimes you need to add WebKit or Moz uh, or this kind of stuff uh, to be sure that is handled on the browser. So you don't need to do that anymore if you use auto prefixing. Because auto prefixer will parse your CSS and add vendor prefixes based on the browsers you need to, to support. So you just need to say, okay, I need to support, for example, the last two mo modern browser, and automatically, for example, that automatically will have the prefix if you need them. Does it also like give you a another word like a default fallback if the browser doesn't support it? No, that's more modernizer. You know what it is? Order no. I... no. So I'm not talking about the front end checklist, but more doing a course <laughs> about front end. So, <laughs> no, 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 that, that, that's it. Uh, so, modernizer, it's a JavaScript file that you can, you need to launch at the, in the head of your page. And it will add some classes. Like, let me show you the example in, in that case. So here, you see some classes. Story, JS, Flexbox, Web Workers. I don't know what it is, but 
these ones are added by modernizer. So in case Flexbox is not supported on the browser, it will not be Flexbox, but no Flexbox. Flexbox. And in that case, I can trigger that that uh, class and do the fallback or something like that. So internal, and uh, it's something I explained in the front end checklist about the modernizer file. Some people, some beginners, they put the moderniser modernizer file, and you have a lot of class that are here. I highly recommend to custom your file. So on that page, you can say, okay, I want to, uh, I want this, I want this, uh, uh, sorry. I want to have a detection of this kind of stuff, and I generate a custom modernizer. Because some, some people, they download directly the whole file, but it's not necessary. Good? It's not too much? If I go too fast, just... <laughs> uh, where I was? So, to end on that, yeah. So, Autoperfixer is going to have... Uh, it's going to add uh, WebKit and uh, all the vendor prefixes. That one, you will not see a lot. Um, when you write SAS, you can, in draw, you, you use a mixing for responsive web design. For example, you say, okay, the header, uh, mixing, for example, you know, responsive, and on, on tablet, I will do that. By default, uh, it will be for mobile, and here it will be for desktop or tablet. And if you look at the CSS generated, you will see a lot of media queries in your file. That task, that NPM module, will uh, unify all the media queries and will reduce your file because it will remove a lot of media queries and unify everything in just one. So that kind of thing can save you, I don't know, 20% of your, the, the weight of your file, of your CSS. CSS Nano is for uh, minifying the CSS file. This one, I need to test more, but what, what this is doing is removing uh, the, the declaration that are not used in your current file. So if, I don't know, if, if I, I don't use something, uh, it will automatically remove it. Because you know, sometimes we use some frameworks, CSS Bootstrap, all this kind of stuff, and we have a lot of declaration that we don't use. So that one will automatically remove what is not used on the website. <laughs> Rename because it's a minified file, so I want to add the dot min automatically. Uh, if I'm on development mode, it will write the source map at that time, and I will put the CSS file on that path. And that is to reload automatically the browser. Please. Never, never work without a live reload or reloading automatically your browser because that is something I'm using since six, seven years and I can't see myself working without because you will save a lot of time F5, 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 F5. I don't use that anymore. You mean that's what you used to, uh, to reload the browser while we never save? So when everything is done, it will. So on that case, it will not reload entirely your page. For CSS, it will inject your CSS. So you, your page will, will not be reloaded. The CSS will, will be changed. Yeah, but then you have to manually reload for CSS changes? No. It will inject a new CSS file on the top of the previews. Oh, so it doesn't have to reload, it's just you see it appear. Oh, wow. Pretty fast. Yeah. 
Webpack does the same for JavaScript and CSS. Browser thing don't do that for JavaScript. It will load the page. But if you use all the hot module reloads on the Webpack, it will do the same for JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So that you, you don't need to reload everything in the page. Yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> but these things are. If you succeed in using that on your workflow, you will save a lot of your time. So go and get on that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can see that it's pretty easy. You just need to know which task you need to use. In what order? In what order? order? Yeah, because you... you depend. Yeah, the rename has to come. And it's more a logic order. Um, no, you, you can put the reason before if you want. But for example, yeah, the logic is to convert to CSS, auto perfix. You can you can invert. It's not an issue. Minification, rename. It's more a logical order than something that is obligation. So, <laughs> I think, yeah, I need to go faster. Um, so that I already showed you, and in your, your work about Google. Yeah, it's a checklist, it's a tool, but if, if you follow a tool but without enjoying your work, I don't see the progress. So, the future of the front-end checklist. You will know some things that few people know. I'm working on uh, version 2 already, so probably on May, if it's not before. Uh, so, like I said, I will add more links and explanation of each point, the why, to understand why I need to apply that rule. At all four teams, I have few people that ask me to have to be able to share with someone else in the team and work uh, on the same checklist. So I need to see how I can handle that. That's a dream of a lot of people. NPM module that will test automatically <laughs> each role. I don't have any any any. Um, Timeline for that, but I really hope to, to launch that soon because I received so many requests about that. Uh, well, for now, it's going to be manual. So, the front end checklist, the next uh, checklist uh, will probably be this one creative checklist for front end developer. So, uh, if you are working as a front-end developer, you will receive web designs. And in general, you need to check a lot of things before starting to code. Do the, the web designer uh, provide you the fonts as the weight of the PSD or the sketch file is good, agreed, was used, etc., 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 etc. So the checklist will be like that. Uh, I don't don't exist any checklist like that with all the elements that need to be checked. So I hope in one month I will uh, publish that new project. I already have the front end stash that is working on WordPress, but I want uh, to rework it and use React uh, for for that. So that's the website uh, where you can find a lot of useful links uh, for tools for front end development. Uh, but I have a lot of draft to publish on, on, on that website. And another one that could be interesting for you too is a front-end path that requires for me a lot more work. Uh, that project will be not a checklist but more a list of all the things a uh, front-end developer need to know. But I want to start from nothing. If you are totally beginner where you need to start what you need to understand for example i don't know but um 
you need to understand how internet is working, what is a server, what is an IP address, it, all these kind of small things. So the VPN. Exactly. So the the double purpose of that uh, project is for total beginners to know exactly. But it's it's gonna be a really small small thing. For example, you need to understand how it's working uh, in your editor code. Most of the time, you, you sorry. I need to <laughs> the yes, editor code. code. <laughs> sorry. Most of the time. People install that on their computer, but they don't understand how it's working, all the possibilities, some shortcuts, essential shortcuts, this kind of stuff. So yeah, it will be huge, and it will be for managers to be able to to judge their their teams and their developers. But it's gonna have like you need to understand this, but it's gonna have the explanation. Sorry. Like you said, you need to understand what an API is, but is it going to have the explanation? Yeah, because everything is already on the internet. Yeah. I will not producing anything, I will produce a list and all the links to videos and articles that I already know where they are. Uh, but I think that could, the content. <laughs> yeah, the, the goal is, for example, you have someone that wants to start, you will have everything that is needed. And so, yeah, but it's huge work, so it's still in progress. So, about the open source project. How to build an open source project. Can I? Yeah, it's good. It's good? Can you continue? You are good? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, everything starts with an idea and the will to share it to the world. Um, that seems easy to understand, but uh, most of the time, uh, yeah, most of the time, people wait to have the better idea, something perfect, to, yeah, just do it. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the joke. Uh, have an open source project and publish on GitHub or another website. You don't need to wait uh, to have the perfect idea or uh, to have everything to publish what you want. Uh, I found a lot of people that are looking for ideas, they are waiting, they are waiting, time is spending, and they don't publish anything, they don't share with the community. I didn't expect to have such an impact with the function checklist. At, at first, it was just front end checklist, just a checklist. But at the end I was really surprised to found that he helped a lot of people uh, around the world. And I never thought about that before I published the project. So one of the advice I, 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 I give is to, if you have any idea, don't hesitate. Do it, publish, share with your friends and your colleagues, maybe before, but after that, go and do it. Do it and talk and write about it. So I spent a lot of time on Twitter, Facebook, and a lot of websites uh, to talk about it. Um, that was my first tweet. I just received 12. Yeah, it's maybe on, on an article on few articles that are published on the internet. I don't know, but you saw that before. <laughs> it was like, I just came up from the meetup, and I was like, okay, long, but I've seen that too before. Uh, and the same day, so it was, it was the second day, so I, I published the project on the 18th, uh, and the, the day after, I published a tweet, and for them I received this. I didn't know what, what it, who had me on, on Project Hand? You know Project Hand? No. Oh. Never on Twitter. You I know? don't use Twitter, so I don't know how I would okay. say Okay, Project Hand, <laughs> it's a website you need to know. <laughs> you can't live without knowing that website. So, Project Hand. Um, it's like that. So, yeah, so 
every day you yeah all the new applications new projects uh, are published every day on that website so it's a website you, you need to, to follow and if you want to find some tool for your work you can easily find on on that it's a huge and well-known uh, website a lot of yeah what do you find there like okay, what do you want question is, um one part of the one, one part of the what <laughs> one part of the, the course yeah i think it's one part of the course is something that's for the legacy project you have to find an open source project and improve it somehow would you find that here because uh, okay a lot a lot well, I'm presenting mine tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> to, to share with your newer students. <laughs> but you will find everything. You look at this. You can find games, books, software engineering, web apps, developer tools, productivity tools, everything that about I don't know uh, how to be more productive, how to do. To, to, They're to, open source. Not all, but you will find open source projects and paid projects. Okay. You will find both. But you will find a lot of things. Every day they publish uh, some, you know, all of these tools. So it's not so how it's working. You can find a project that is not here, and you can propose a project. You can add that new project here. Okay. Post the product. No, it can be another project. Or on my in my case. Uh, my profile, um, my lead, and the front end checklist. So, a guy named. Uh, where it is? No, no, no. So, this guy, I don't know the guy, uh, had the project on Project Hands. And after that, I don't know how. But I received uh, the tweet saying, okay, someone add your project on Project Hunt. I needed to, 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 to create these things fast because they, they, they were without any logo, any image, and this kind of stuff. I needed uh, in really few hours to produce a logo and produce this, this graphic uh, to, to, to have something on Project Hunt. And people can vote your project, and the project that are with more uh, votes during the day, they receive a, like a medaille, like a medal, yeah, this kind of stuff. And you can see that medals here, for example, the, the project, project most of, of voted on during the day, or this kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you need to be prepared to 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 do things to have more visibility. Uh, but so, for example, if you have any project, open source project, or paid project, you put on project tent, and that can help you to have a lot more visibility. But do you know medium.com? Please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Medium.com. You need to have an account on that website. It's an obligation. So you wrote an article on Medium? Yeah, few. Yeah, I will show you. So medium.com. So medium.com. It's a free biggest platform for publishing articles. So if you don't have any account, you need to create one. Can I see the logo? Uh, they changed recently. Uh, it's a, it's a hem, hem. They changed. Before it was like two, yeah, different M. It was uh, like an, a, a, a white M on a black background? Exactly. Okay, then, then I know. Okay. But, <laughs> I suggest you to have an account because with an account you can, yeah, you can start some some articles, save some articles. So, um, and 
on Medium, on you have a few different um, people or companies that can, they can have their own channel. They pay eighty dollars and they can have their own channel. And Freecode Camp has his own channel, and they allowed me to publish an article on Freecode Camp. Freecode Camp is. 400,000 members, so it's a lot of people, and do you know that website? Yeah. So Chris Coyer, that created the pen too, uh, proposed me to write an article on Success Tricks too. Yeah, it was like Christmas, it was, it was like Christmas. But uh, <laughs> I said, no, it's not possible. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I know a little bit Chris since uh, last year because I had uh, some events in, in Mauritius and he gave us some free accounts on Cotpen on, for one year that, that we give to our, uh, our attendees. Uh, so yeah, we exchanged by mail and he told me, oh, you send me something about that. Okay, and there are some, so that's all of this is to give you an idea if tomorrow you have some, some, some project in mind, all the things you need to care about. So that is wh when they're published on success tricks. I can't see how many likes, but it's 300, 300 <laughs> likes. Uh, that is for November, so I, I, so I received the, the, the most stars in November on GitHub was for the content checklist. Oh. Yeah, you can see trending this month, so that was the uh, first, and on developers, my case, my gosh. Um, on versioning, you know side points? sitepoints.com you can find tutorials, articles, interesting imagery and you have Adam that is publishing uh, every two weeks or every week um, newsletter and and <laughs> I couldn't believe that amazing uh, so he published twice so in the previous uh, newsletter he already uh, spoke about uh, the Toronto checklist and on that one said that, I don't know why, but uh, that is from another um, newsletter and that is from SAS News. So everything was completely in unexpected yes. and yeah, I still don't believe it, but and that is Sidebar. Sidebar, it's uh, published by the French guy that is living in Japan, I don't remember his name. But it's a daily newsletter. So I produce it from that. Side side the ball. Side ball. Side ball. Mm. Oops. Um, side ball. And in general you you find Everything around web design, product, uh, digital product, web design, this kind of stuff. It's every day. And, uh, yeah. So some, some advices linked to what I said. You need to be really reactive. Yeah, Twitter, 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 Twitter. You no, know, email and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, at first for me on Twitter it was complicated, but with time you 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 you, you exchange, you you create some some relationships. Twitter is a really interesting tool, and we communicate by it, it's <laughs> on Twitter, uh, GitHub, etc. I. Less now, but at the beginning of you know, November and December, I received emails from what well, nice and from them checklist, and I create some some relations with people. That it's a really good uh, thing uh, related to open source projects. Need to be prepared to spend a lot of time exchanging and correcting some bugs. 
I still have things to correct. Uh, accept some pull requests. A lot of times I, I, I found a lot of open source projects with a lot of pull requests and the creator don't really change, don't validate some pull requests, this kind of stuff. I feel that is a responsibility when you have people that give you some visibility and stir your project. It's an exchange. You need to give your time to them if, you know, it's not okay. I do an open source project and I don't touch any more on that. Uh, and in case you don't have any time, you can collaborate with some other people that will be able to validate your pull request. Keep a record of all website later tweets which talk about your project. I will have a Facebook fan page. I have a lot of fans. But it just I use this to 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 say thank you for some websites. Uh, so for example from the fan page. Uh, so for example, oh yeah, that was from Twilio, but for example, yesterday I found, uh, yeah, it's Russian, a Russian website uh, that they give me, in one day, I think, 700 v visits, because as you can see, in terms of views, it's a lot. And it was published a few days ago. Uh, yeah, do you want to know what I translate to English because I don't know Russian. Uh, but yeah, I created that fan page just to, you know, hey, thank you, this kind of stuff. And that helped me to keep some sort of timeline. And Noop Magazine, Dr. Webb, in German and this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, be ready to maintain like, new versions too. So that's an example of uh, Google Analytics. So on the 4th of December, uh, the maximum I had was 5,000 in one day for a simple. It was because of some popular newsletter that published a link uh, to the different objectives. I don't know if it was SidePoint or a few a different newsletter. And yeah, people are still using. It's less, but um, yeah, it's still active. But I guess it will be more when I will launch a new version. And here are the top five countries. I was really surprised by Russia. They have a large community of developers. It's incredible. I went to, how it's called? The Russian social media? Yeah, I created an account there. Uh, and I, I wrote some, some comments and I said, oh, you are here! <laughs> uh, on, on some posts they, they put uh, about the content checklist, but I was really impressed because a lot of the posts are in Russia. But yeah, in Germany, third. Um, so, yeah, that's more or less what yeah, I wanted to share with you about this. Any question before? Let me see some few examples. Maybe. No, just very cool. <laughs> yeah, you were able to do that. Yeah. But I'm surprised. Yeah, like I came here. And I, I saw, I remember seeing on me, it was a front end checklist. I'm like, oh, I had no idea it was going to be like the same one that I was using before. Yeah. This is really cool. But what it's you know, it's it's something that everyone can can do. It's not, uh, yeah, it was based on my experience and some projects, but open source projects are for everyone. And why I learned it's every idea can be a good idea, but you need to put some time and some effort. 
but for example, the um, the creative checklist for front end developer is something I'm I've been saying to my different teams since years, and I and it's working. But I never found anyone creating a checklist like like that. So I suppose that checklist will help a lot of people too, and that that. That the goal, if you publish some open source project, is generally to help people to to tackle a problem or an issue. All these frameworks you hear about, React, Angular, this kind of stuff, they aren't just tools that are here to help and to provide a way to build stuff fast and with some some yeah easily. So anything can can be an open source project uh, and can help a lot of people. Um, and you have a lot of people like you that are interested in front end development but don't know where to start or what to follow. And some other thing I have. <laughs> Sorry. I was for the longest time like where do we start? But th that's. I was surprised because even I am working with front end. I was surprised so many people in the world are in the same look, in the same state, and are looking for information. So many people, and more and more people are looking for. Yeah, there's like a big gap between, to say, regular design and like being a front end engineer. Like people are looking for information. There's like a huge gap, and the world needs a lot of people in the gap. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, most of the good developers are not they're not coming from universities or schools. But what I like about web development it's something you you will never stop learning sorry for but you will never stop learning new things. And even the community is huge, you will learn always something new from others. Even they don't have, they have less experience than you, or more experience. That could be interesting for you too. Resources for front-end beginners. So I try to, to have a small list. So I, it's not missing things, but I decide not to put everything that is online as most, most important. So there are links with some emoticons. Um, about courses and tutorials and games and guidelines uh, that I think can be interesting for <coughs> yeah, about CSS documentation, guidelines, quiz challenges, articles in French too so that could be really interesting so it's uh, essential Content that you can find on the internet about uh, front end development for beginners. I will probably publish a more advanced list, but for now, it's a start. Code combat. Sorry? Code combat. Should be there. Uh, not sure I put in there. Cut code. Yeah, cut code. No, because I think I wanted to put he uh, on the second list. I didn't put it, it's why I didn't put everything. I know that website. I have an account in that. But um, even for example, people told me oh, where you, why you you don't put some uh, I don't know some some few things. But I thought that could be used by really bigger people. I don't I didn't want to put so, too many things. Uh, so it's why it's, it's not, it's small, these websites are essential, if you don't know these websites, uh, and some newsletters. Do you know that image, where it's coming from? So the developer roadmap was created two years ago, I think. 
but every year it changes the, the, the year. So that could be really, really interesting. Uh, it's a roadmap for, for what you need to, to know. So that it's for front end. So the name is Web Developer Roadmap 2018. Yeah. If you want to take a picture. <laughs> And you have for backend too. So that's for front end and that it's for backend. And you have DevOps roadmap too. So that's pretty interesting. It's still, it was done two years ago, but it's still relevant. Um, well, let me maybe explain fast that. Uh, thing so you have first you need to understand the basics that's really important and it's written in JavaScript not jQuery all this kind of stuff JavaScript so after that you have some few things so responsive web design CSS here are some examples uh, some CSS frameworks examples so you have Bootstrap but you have these two and you have a lot more. Uh, so SAS, less timeless, post CSS, SAS, you know about it, post CSS, no. So that is a preprocessor CSS, that it's a post processor, post processor. Oh, you understand? Uh, so the difference, you write on a CSS file, post CSS, uh, convert your CSS file on a JavaScript object, apply some plugins, and at the end you have a CSS file. So for example, auto-prefixer, you can use auto-prefixer on a CSS file, uh, and you can apply a lot of other things. For example, post CSS, uh, don't know. I don't remember the website. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, for example, just to give you an example. You want to use some, um, some new things that are not currently supported by some browsers on, the CSS, on a CSS file. You can use it. So you have your CSS file, you use things that are not supported everywhere. You put your CSS through post CSS, and at the end you will have a CSS file that will be working on all the browsers. So it's a little bit different than preprocessor CSS. So to recap, you have your CSS file is converted to a JavaScript object. Some plugins can be applied on that object and at the end you have a new different CSS file. Is there file. all things that are applied like in your webpack or file? Yeah, you can use Gold, you can use Webpack, you can use whatever you want to uh, to use web post CSS. So just to show you the GitHub page. So transforming styles with JavaScript plugins. And you can use SAS in this or you can use uh, things that are in SAS on the CSS file is a little bit strange, but you can have your .css file and use some mixing from SAS. You need to use some plugins for that. So, for example, you have auto prefixer here, and you have pre CSS. It's a plugin that contains plugins for SAS-like features, variables, nesting, and mixing. You can, for example, insert image dimensions and inline files. You can generate new. So, yeah, you can find this kind of stuff with Gulp too. But it's a different way to handle this kind of possibility. Uh, so, going back to the. Where? Oops. Where it was? Here? So. You have some task runners, Gulp, 
Uh, you can use npm2, JavaScript. It's for testing, like you said, it's a mocha. Jest is more for React that you can use for everything. Yarn npm, some frameworks, uh, and some module loader and bottler. Do you know about Parcel? It's the newest one. Parcel is really interesting in case you have something small and you don't need any configuration. Parcel is work without any configuration. So some basic things, if you have CSS, it will convert on CSS. But without any without any configuration. For for cell bundler. So zero configuration and out of the box support for JavaScript, CSS, HTML, fill out sets, no plugins to install, automatically transform modules using Babel or CSS. Now you know what it is. Uh, cut splitting, blah blah blah, blah. out module replacement like Webpack. Uh, and yeah, so it converts your um, CSS on CSS, your bug files on HTML, etc. etc. You don't need any any configuration. And just for your information, I think it's a version four for Webpack. They will it will be able to use Webpack without any configuration on Webpack four, like Parcel. Yeah, they they end it. Uh, yeah, and and voila, and there are uh, some methodologies. Do you know Ben? Work element modifier, but I will, well, I will not spend more time. But you can check on the internet about all the things. But there are some basics uh, in yellow you need to know and be aware of. It's a huge world. Voila! Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, and it's unfortunately I don't have all the days in Barcelona, but I like to share all these things about frontend development because I think uh, it's I don't know I like this. Yeah. But I wanted to give you at least a small, small experience and small uh, overview about all the things. So frontend checklist is just an example but um, you have a lot more to discover. And honestly, without talking about a lot more, but today, if you like JavaScript, you like front-end in general, you can do everything you want. So with Node, you can use JavaScript on the server side, outside the browser, so you can build games, applications, everything you want. Um, 